us to replenish ours. Good to have friends, isn't it? Friends that you can rely on, friends that you can depend on, and uh, those who will be with you when the going is tough and when the days are dark. And uh, good to have friends you know who will be there, and that you can call on them in trouble. I want to talk to you this morning about when a friend doesn't come. In John's Gospel, chapter 11, John's Gospel, chapter 11, let me read some verses to you from verse 17. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in the grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would have not died. If only you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Mary and Martha were in such a time of trauma when life turned for them a sharp and difficult turn for the worse as Lazarus, their brother, became sick. They sent a message to Jesus in hope and expectation that their friend would come. He was a close friend of the family, visited them, stayed with them. John is at pains in this, this account to remind us that Jesus loves them dearly. And the message they sent was, He who you love dearly is very sick, Lord. He's very sick. There was in that, I guess, an anticipation that he would come. Jesus was miles away. He was across the Jordan where John had been baptizing in Ireland. And uh, he was there because the Jews were out looking for him to kill him. They had disagreed with his doctrine. They had disagreed with his witness that God was with him. Indeed, that God was in him. Indeed, he had said that I and the Father are one. And uh, it was that they had then taken up stones as though they would kill him immediately with stoning. But Jesus evaded them and left. And it was here across the Jordan that the message came to him. And he stayed where he was, we read, for two days. He told the disciples this sickness is not unto death. This is about the glory of God being revealed. This is about my authority, my glory, being confirmed before Israel. And he stayed where he was for two days while the sisters waited and waited and hoped and cried why it was so long for Jesus to come. As they watched their brother grow weaker and eventually slip away. Not only did Jesus not come to the sick bed, 
He didn't come to the funeral. And how sad was that for them? That their best friend was not there. Not there to console them, comfort them, do something. Jesus arrived. But now he wanted to see Lazarus. He had told his disciples, I'm going to Judea. They said, Don't dare, Jesus. Don't dare go there. Don't you know the Jews are looking for you to kill you? I'm going to see Lazarus. He's sleeping. I'm going to wake him up. The disciples say, well, if he's sleeping, he's getting better. You don't need to trouble yourself. You don't need to put yourself at risk. And then he told them clearly, Lazarus is dead. Hang on. This sickness is not unto death. But now, Lazarus is dead. see in the troubles of our lives with all its ups and downs with its bright days and with its sad days that God has a purpose which is being worked out for his glory in our lives and sometimes circumstances turn against the likely fulfillment of our hopes and our dreams and we feel that they are slipping away from us they are dying to us and we cry we call upon our friend sometimes he doesn't come. Do you know that Christians are not immune from trouble? Do you know that Christians are not immune from sadness and sorrow and loss? Trouble comes in so many different guises. And we need our friend then. We need our friend who intercedes for us in glory. But we need him too in the words of comfort of our brothers and sisters in the church. We need each other at such times to be strong and hopeful even though the scene around is bleak to our looking. Jesus came eventually, didn't he? Mary and Martha in turn meet him and with exactly the same words, words that they had spoken over the deathbed of their brother, if Jesus had been here, he would have died. If Jesus had been here, he wouldn't have died. And both of them together at different times with the same words. They said, Oh Lord, if only you would come in time. Do you know that Jesus is never late? The purpose of the Father will be fulfilled, and he will come. In his time, not to satisfy us, not to take our problems away, which is often the motive of our praying, 
to take out from the truth of where he is. He comes to glorify the Father. He comes to establish his ways in our lives. To do things and to work this great salvation out in our lives not according to our thinking and our plans and our ideas, but according to his eternal plan and purpose to make us the people he wants us to be. You see, Jesus at the tomb with Mary and Martha from the crowd with them, and they are mumbling and saying, couldn't this man who opened the eyes of the blind done something to prevent Lazarus dying? Jesus sees the brokenness, the despair in the hearts and lives of his dear friends, the sisters of Lazarus. He weeps with them. It says he wept in anger that death should have brought such calamity into the human condition. He was sad for the tears. He wept for their tears, for their heartache. He wept in care and compassion and love for them in their sorrow. And then he asks that the stone be removed from the tomb. Martha says, by this time, four days since he's died in this heat, Lord, he'll be stinking. Remove the stone. And immediately it was evident that Jesus had prayed before. For there was no smell. There was no indication that Lazarus was corrupted by this death. Jesus prayed, Father, I thank you that you are always here when I speak to you. Do you have that confidence that the Father hears when you speak to him? Jesus had prayed for Lazarus that he should not see corruption. For here is a visual demonstration of his death and resurrection. He had told his disciples I want you to see this, to believe. I want you to believe I am who I am. I want you to believe that I am doing the works that only God can do. I want you to be strong for what is coming down the road when we go again to Jerusalem and I am delivered into the hands of the Jews and the Romans. And so it was there at the tomb. The name is called Lazarus. Come out to them. And Lazarus, amazingly, miraculously, wonderfully, joyfully come out of the tomb. How he came, I don't know. Because he was bound with all the grave clothes, he must have come with him. Because he was bound. Jesus command, release him. Let him go. And the news spreads, Lazarus is alive. Oftentimes,
find, we have found in the graveyard of our sorrows, of our disappointments, of that call of God that we thought would be one thing, and it appeared to be something else. The long time of waiting for God to fulfill his promise, to fill, fulfill his word. And sometimes we get impatient and we park that call. We park that vision. We park that impress of God on our lives, that purpose he tells us, he's called us for. We park it because now it seems so difficult, so impossible. And in the graveyard of our dreams, we wait. For another time, for Jesus to come and take us home, out of this world, out of these circumstances, out of these problems, uh, out of this dilemma of church and how we can live it as Jesus intended. Take us home, Lord, come and wipe away the tears from our eyes, come and heal our aching, broken hearts, come and fulfill our hope. And he says, yes, I will, but not yet. I want you to be the people I called you to be when first you heard my voice, when first I laid the claim on you. It's not finished yet. There is no life to be lived. There's a new life in new dimensions to be experienced. Those of us come out of there we hear the Lord calling your name this morning, calling you by your name and saying, it's not over, it's not finished. My word is sure and steadfast, the promise is sure and secure. Come out of that mourning, come out of, of that despair. Come out of that confusion. Come and live at my call. Jesus calls us away from our yesterdays and all that they were. You see, I see here as Lazarus comes out and I guess the Lord is sending out a call to people over this lockdown period. The Lord is sending a call to those who perhaps have worshipped in churches and chapels long years ago. Sending a call, stirring their hearts, bringing them home to church. The Lord is sending a call within the congregations of the church. I want my church to be pure. I want my church to be strong. I want my church to be hopeful. I want my church to be faithful. I want my church to be devoted. Come forth from all that we're not into all that we can be. By his call on our lives, by his spirit working in us. Lazarus, come forth. Emmanuel, come forth. Take the grave clothes of her. Those grave clothes can 
they come, can we accept them as they are? And teach them and train them in the ways of the Lord, in the love of fellowship to accept and receive them unconditionally as Jesus had received them too. Can we rejoice over them? Not only when they come through the doors, but for the months and the years afterwards, to value them, to rejoice over them, to encourage them, and to forgive them. Strip off the grave clothes. Let them be who God has called them to be. Let's not confine people into their yesterdays to blame people for their backsliding, to blame people that they weren't there when we needed them, to blame people because you had to do a bit extra because they weren't around. It's so easy to get there. Take off the grave clothes. Just be glad and rejoice over one another. That God's grace, God's glory is manifest here because we are saved by the grace of God and by the blood of Christ. Our sins have been washed away. We sinner people, now called saints, promised eternal glory in the presence of the Father, are big problems. These discouragements, these things that will get you down and confine you and shut you in like Lazarus in his lockdown in our tomb. Let us allow him to come forth. Let us take off the great clothes and let him live a life joy in the fellowship of church. We can be new people with new lives each day as we come before the Lord and present ourselves to him. Look for his spirit to lead us and guide us, inspire us and move us afresh. We sing that we all for a new anointing, all for a his presence as we heard this morning his presence amongst us Jesus did more for these sisters than they could have dreamed the friend didn't fail the friend continued to be as you read the succeeding chapters he visited them glory of Lazarus' restoration. Oh, may we to rejoice in everyone who comes amongst us, bind them, and bless them in Jesus' name as we receive them in God's grace. Let's pray together. I don't know this morning if you have found yourself in some sort of tomb, in some sort of dark place where you'd hoped Jesus would come and he didn't. The things in your life seem to have be unraveling. But I just want you to know that Jesus is true. Mm -hmm. He is faithful. He doesn't give up on us. No matter about our lack of faith, matter about uh, our sometimes sinfulness, no matter about our sometimes faithlessness, our Jesus is faithful friend. He comes to call us again out of the gloom and out of the tomb that we may serve him with energy, that we might
white witness his glory that we may rejoice in his favor. Let's reach out this morning. By faith, hear his call, hear his word, respond and say, O oh, Lamb of God, I'm coming, I'm coming. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Our glorious God and Father, <laughs> you are so faithful and true. Lord Jesus Christ, God indeed, we worship you and give you glory. You are our faithful friend. You call us feeble, human beings and make us strong by your spirit to do your will to go about your business well here we are Lord here we are we're not perhaps what we should be but we're not what we used to be either you have called us quickened us now Lord bring us out into the full day of your glory of your presence amongst us. Bring us, Lord, to that realization that it's your purpose, it's your glory, and not our reputation that you're concerned about. Oh, that you may be seen in Virginia. Oh, that you might be seen in our families. Oh, that you might save in sons and daughters brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, that you would comfort and strengthen and help your people. Oh Lord, we cry to you. And so we commit ourselves, Lord, to your care and keeping. We give ourselves over to your purpose and say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not all future, Lord, although that is our ultimate hope. But in the year and now, Lord, we are looking for you to work and to do in the name that is above 